Fantastic. So welcome everyone to my free masterclass. So this is how to lose weight with ease and actually enjoy the process. So um, I wanted to start this with a quote from uh, one of my favorite quotes from Audrey Hepburn. And Audrey says, nothing is impossible. The word itself says I'm possible. So I like to keep these sessions as interactive as possible. So just type in the chat as we go. And if you have any, I'm going to invite you to think about to answer some questions, but also if you have, if you're, if I say something and you're not sure, just, just um, type in the chat so I can address it as we go. Um, and um, oh yeah. And just, and also type in the chat and, um, and just share like where you're, where you're joining from. Like, I'd love to know, um, yeah, love to know what love to know where you're where, where you're joining from. So type in the chat, say hi. Okay, so just and so the plan for today, the goal for this call is really to like open your mind to the possibility that you can change your relationship with food. Oh yeah, Melissa's here from Vermont. Awesome. Um so yeah, the the plan, the goal of this call really is to open your mind to this possibility that it's possible for you to change your relationship with, with food and that you can actually enjoy the process, that it can actually be, it doesn't actually have to be hard and that it's possible for you to like actually lose weight or get to your ideal weight with ease and joy. So there's three things we want to get, we're going to get really clear about today. So first we're going to look at your ideal future, like where you would like to get to. Um, and then we'll zoom back to now and have a look at like, good look at, at what's what's working, what's not working now. And then when we know like where you are now and where you want to get to, then we'll share the, I'll share the best, we'll work out the best strategy to get the, get you there with ease and joy. Um, and also I promised um, I'm going to share with you a really tiny baby actionable step that you can take um, the first, like your first step that you can take to start you on this process. So yes, so it's going to be fun um, and it's going to surprise you as well. So before, does that sound good to everyone? Yeah. Okay, great. So um yeah, so before we get we get in into into that, just a super quick introduction for those of you that know, don't know me that well. Um, oh, Evelyn's Ellen's joined. Hey, Ellen. Um, so, thing that you should know about me is that I love food. Like, and two of my favorite things to eat are cheese and ice cream. So, <laughs> um, yeah. yay! So, type in the chat and let me know. Like, what 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 are your favorite things things to eat? I want to hear for, hear from hear from you. Um, but yeah, for me, being a big food lover is really important. And yes, I care about my health, but that, but 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 um, my love of food comes foremost. And so I'm a, actually trained as a food scientist, and I also had a side career as a winemaker. But um, in recent years, I've become a health coach, and I'm really love behavior change, and I really am on a mission to be the best health coach for food lovers in the world. So. Um, and to help people get to this place where they're having a healthy relationship with food, where they've got the habits and the behaviors that that really serve them, where they get to enjoy, find this balance of enjoying food and also like not being in that struggle anymore. And so enjoying food and feeling good in their bodies. Um, so I'm not, not someone that was ever like super overweight. It's not like I've lost a hundred pounds, but until September, 2020, and I know that that date for sure like I always struggled with my relationship with food it was always a lot of effort and I was always I had a lot of fear around oh yeah Carla shared her favorite foods tacos oh yum my boys love tacos cheese bananas oh, I'm a cheese fan too Lizzie <laughs> amazing yeah keep sharing in the chat if you've just joined share in the chat what your favorite um, things are to eat um, yeah so I was just saying that I was never super overweight, but it was always like this big struggle, like of like, you know, overeating and then restricting and just the mindset was really, really difficult. And then in September, 2020, I actually learned from a coach, Green Crabtree. She believed that I could learn this skill of listening to my body and just tuning into like eating the right amount for my body. And I, so I like learned that skill in 2020 and everything changed. Like it just 
everything became really peaceful and really easy. And it was like, I didn't have to worry about all this external noise anymore. And I could just focus on my body and it was just so fun. So that's a super quick intro about me. Um, so just so you know where I'm coming from. So I do have, I have did when in food science, I did study nutrition, but the behavior change piece is really been, um, is really what is inspiring me now. So that's enough about me. Um, so let's look at, um, now we're going to look at um, where, like, where you, we're going to look, first of all, we're going to look at your ideal future. So where you would like to get to. And so we're going to do an exercise called the magic wand exercise. And basically all it is, is I want you to think if we could wave a magic wand and like anything was possible, what would you like your food? What would you want your relationship with food to look like in 12 months time? Like, just, I want you to think like, and type in the chat, like, so what would you be noticing if you could have your ideal <laughs> Lynn say cookies? Um, yeah, like what would you be noticing? And, um, and what would be different? So I'm really curious to, to find out, like just think like if you could have, if we, you could wave, if we were going to wave a magic wand and anything was possible, like what would your relationship with food look like in 12 months time? type in the chat great melissa said more ease less fear less feeling like i need to control my eating so tightly yes yeah so you'd feel that ease with it melissa for sure um sherry's saying excellent portion control um mf is saying i wouldn't eat out of frustration um yeah lizzie's saying freedom to eat what my body needs um Carla's saying she'd have lower blood pressure, HBP, I guess this, that's high, high blood pressure. Um, Dean's saying I would enjoy many different foods and have learned to listen to what my body needs. Yeah, so you'd have that in, in, um, and not feed cravings. Yes, Lizzie. So, yeah, like you'd be in that place where you, where you wouldn't be overeating cravings. Yeah, not overthinking it. Yes, Katie, yeah, feeling that peace with it, not emotionally eating. Yeah huge huge and just think like and what else would you be noticing if you're in that place like when it was your ideal relationship with food like like food would actually be enjoyable hey like food would be fun and there wouldn't be like this stress around it and it wouldn't be and you wouldn't be like and I think the other thing place that thing that I love about having a, my ideal relationship with food is that it, it's peaceful I'm enjoying my food more than ever and also, but it doesn't take up like so much brain space. Like it's like, I'm free to think about when I'm not thinking about food, like I'm not obsessing about it in between meals. Yes, when I'm eating my meals, I'm there and I'm loving it, but I, my mind's freed for other things like in between. So um, yeah, so you can see like how good that would feel. And I want you to think about like, if you got to that place where you weren't craving, where you um, where you had that freedom and you're feeling in control, like what the impact of that change would be like in five years time or 10 years time, like if you made that change now, I just want you to think about that. Yeah, just like how different like the trajectory of your life would be. Um, get the last quarter of your weight program, says Ellen right <laughs> amazing okay um i would be at peace yeah that's right yeah and you'd be unstoppable and just think of like you know the impact to it's not only about food is it it's like how you're feeling in your body it's how you show up in the world it's like the confidence that you exude like and how if you're feeling more confident like you know how that would impact your career how it impacts your relationships like you know when you're feeling good in yourself how you're able to um, interact with your loved ones in a in a in a more positive way as well um natalie's shared my, my knee joints would be happy so lizzie yeah 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 so that physical feeling in your body would be would be different as well and also think about like when you look in your wardrobe like how that would be like how that would be different like being able to like look in your wardrobe and feel good because all these clothes in here fit and just being able to get dressed with 
um, you know, based on like what you feel like wearing rather than getting dressed based on, oh, what's going to fit me today kind of thing. Um, yeah, feeling that ease with your wardrobe, so good. Um, Natalie's saying, um, I would like to be at ease and to turn to other support than food for through anxiety. But enjoy more creative space. Yeah. So when you're like, yes, when your body and your physical needs are taken care of, then you that opens you up to being more, um, more like, yes, more able to like pursue other interests and and creative like and be more creative for sure. Um, MF saying I would have more breath for singing. Beautiful. We would hear your like your beautiful voice would be be, be more. Um, so yeah, amazing. Okay, so so you all know what it would feel like to get to that place where you had your ideal relationship with food. Um, so now let's like we've got a clear view of that. Now let's like um, tune back into like the present day and just think now about like how things are actually in reality now, and like what's your relationship with food in your body like now, and like you know, and what's like really let's th th think about what like what's not what working so again type in the chat and share what's what's not working for you right now and um, I guess if we look through like um Katie had said like her ideal feature is that she's not overthinking it so I guess at the moment then the reality is at the moment you probably are overthinking it hey Katie or, and that that the, and then you said in the ideal feature that you would not be over overheating emotionally eating and so like and now I guess that that's what's happening Lizzie's saying I eat fast right I don't like MF saying I don't like cooking thinking about cooking's um distraction from and it's frustrating um Right, Dean's saying I find myself eating food that I don't even like and certainly impacts negatively on my health. So, yeah, great, Dean. Well, not great, but, you know, it's good to have a clear goal and, like, clear view of what's what's not working. So when people, when I work with people, it's kind of two common um, situations that people are in where things aren't working. Um, Melissa's saying I have so much anxiety around eating well and I have difficulty traveling because there's too much anxiety around controlling my food right so yeah Melissa like that's really stressful isn't it like when you because when you aren't in control of your in food environment like then when you're traveling you don't get to enjoy the travel because you're stressing so much about oh what am I going to eat what's going to be available like you know that's um Zelly's saying I like eating and I don't want to stop. So yeah, that overeating. Um, Carla's saying don't plan at all, don't cook, careless eating. Yeah, it's giving into craving. Said Laurel, don't stop eating treats when I'm full. Says Sherry, over munching on healthy crackers. That's the thing, Lizzie. Yeah, like like this idea of healthy food even if it doesn't matter like whether the food's healthy or not if you're overeating it you're like it's still like if you're eating too much it's still not going to be it's, it doesn't help with your your like your body um yeah so most people like they're either in like kind of one of two camps and sometimes people flip between the the two so there's first is like where you just feel like out of control where you're really food's controlling you and you just eat whatever's put in front of you it's one of my clients said she, like she was on a seafood diet that whole seafood and eat it thing um and you just like you're not a, not intentional you tend to like, overindulge and then regret your choices um and you know you're feeling low energy feeling uncomfortable in your body and as one of my clients before she started working with me said she actually felt like she was living in somebody else's body she was like I don't know how I got here this isn't didn't really feel like me um there can be a lot of guilt and shame and regret around our eating and of course um like erratic weight gain so and then the other camp that people so there's like the kind of out of control we're not or just have given up like just eating whatever and then the other is when you're like people are in diet mentality and they're like restricting and there's a lot of rules and lists of things that you can and can't eat or you're counting calories um, or there's like forbidden foods and like food, food moralizing, like seeing food as good and bad and then feeling good. Of, if you're eating good food, you're feeling good. But if you're eating the bad foods, then you like you're feeling bad about it. Um, 
it's very antisocial and like um uh who said about the travel um yeah yeah like it's um it's because you've got these rules so it's like if someone wants to go out for pizza you're freaking out because you're like oh what am I going to eat I can't have carbs or you know whatever it is, whatever it is. Uh, or you and you or you tend to avoid social situations because you have all these rules and just it doesn't fit in with your diet um or and there's a lot of fear or, and then there, there can also be you know if you ruin the day you eat something you that's not on your diet then you've like ruined the day and so you get into a lot of like what the hell eating where you just go oh well, I've already ruined the day and so you're overeating um to overcome that restriction um and yes with a diet mentality you can get rapid weight loss but then it tends to rebound back so you get this erratic weight as well and then even like with diet mentality, even when you reach a goal, there's a lot of fear that the weight's going to come back on because you've had to do, like you have had to be so strict and rigid with it to get to this place. And um, yeah, so there's like that fear, always that fear of, of like, oh, it's going to come back, it's going to come back. Um, yeah, so this is, this is really common. And if you identify with any of those, those then you're totally not alone. Um, like so many people in the world like more people than not are like struggle with food and so like this is totally like nothing's nothing's wrong and the good news is though that it is possible to get from either of those situations whether you're in the out of control or you're in that diet mentality situation it is possible to get from there to that that magic one place to that ideal place where it feels peaceful where it feels easy where you're enjoying food and you're feeling good in your clothes and so now we're going to talk now we get to the like the, the fun bit where we get to to talk about the roadmap of how we're going to how, how how so how like because that's the question is really it's like how do I get there I've like tried all these things Jules and it hasn't I haven't been able to get to that peaceful place um so there's there's kind of two parts to this and so the first is like there's actually like one really sneaky little thing that's blocking you that's holding you back from getting to your ideal place and it's not your age it's not your hormones it's not your genetics it's not your lack of willpower it's not your fitness levels or your lack of exercise um it's not that you love to food food too much and and it's um and the reason I know this is because I've helped so many people overcome all of those situations, the hormones, the age, the lack of willpower, the genetics, all those things. Um, so it's none of those reasons. And the real reason why you don't have the ideal, your ideal relationship with food is like your mindset and your lack of self-belief that you can get there. Um, so there's a great quote from Henry Ford. He says, you, if you think you can or you think you can't, you're right either way. And so really like the, the, the one thing that we, that the, the first thing that we need to change in order to, um, in order to get you to moving forward into being, having your ideal relationship with food is really looking at your mindset. And starting to build that belief that it's possible for you to change. Because if you're thinking, oh, I'll never change because I'm getting too old, or I'll never change because of my hormones, or I'll never change because of my family history, my genetics, then those thoughts are going to keep you, like, like Henry Ford said, if you think you can't do it, then you're not going to be able to do it. So what we want to do instead is just open your mind up. So, so rather than directing your, your attention on, on the all those the 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 thing the all those reasons why you can't we want to just leave them there and just start directing your attention away from that onto the possibility that it is possible for you to change and and that like because if you're when you're thinking oh it's possible for me to change then you're opening your mind up to like trying different things and for like and um, and yeah, it, that just really sets the scene for, for change to happen. And it starts with that first thought that it's possible for me to change my relationship with food. So my first um, thing that I want you to take away from this, this class is that thought that it's possible for me to change. And you can actually apply this to any area of your life where you want to change. But, um, but I, you know, in this instance, changing our relationship with food 
like write that down just start writing that down every day like just set a reminder on your phone or put on a post-it on your bathroom mirror or something just it's possible for me to change my relationship with food or or if you want to make it shorter change is possible and just start thinking that thought um, that's really like the, the place where all change begins is just be believing that it's possible for us to do it and the other thing that can really help with your mindset is working with a coach because a lot of people that when they come come to me like that their belief is really low that they can change for all those reasons and you know, because they haven't done it before so which of course like when you haven't done something before it's it is hard to believe that you are going to change uh, but when you work with a coach, the cool thing is that it's like the coach's job. So it's my job. And one of the things I love so much about my job is it's like my job to believe in your ability to change before you before you have that that belief. And so I like hold the belief for you that you can change while you're building, while you're, while you're going from possibility to believing in yourself. Um, and the other thing that can be really helpful with um the other thing that can be really helpful with building your belief that you can change is actually having a process to follow. So rather than, so then you can, like you can, if you don't 100% believe in yourself, you can believe, okay, again, you can trust the process and know that if I follow the process, that's going to help me change. Um, oh, sorry that you have to leave, Dean. I'll be sending out the replay. So um, yeah, so this is, so that this that one sneaky thing about our thoughts and our belief, the way to overcome that is first start thinking on purpose, like intentionally thinking it's possible for me to change. And then if you want some extra help, like working with a coach and or following a clear, simple process can be a really powerful thing to do. Okay, so speaking of process, so I said there were like, we're talking, we're in that section where we're talking about like how you get there. How do you get to this magic one place? So the first is changing your thoughts and just opening yourself up to belief. The second is, um, the second the second part of like how we're going to get there is to having, as I mentioned, is like having a process to follow. And so when, when I work with people, there are two key skills that we work on building that that make all the difference in changing the relationship with food. And so there's actually only two skills that you need to go from where you are now to being someone that has a healthy relationship with food. And I know that may sound like incredibly simplistic, but it really, it does just come down to these two things. And I've worked with hundreds of people in changing their relationship with food. And this is all it takes. And this is certainly for me, this is all it took for me as well. Um, so the first, the, the two skills are, first of all, is listening to your tummy or listening to your body and learning to tune in and um and and like stop eating when your body's satisfied so giving your body the right amount of food and is really key um and then the, the second skill is making intentional choices so i'll go a bit in 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 more depth on both of those so the skill of listening to your tummy is really key because it's not what you're eating that's a problem. Like people think that it's like, I'm not cooking enough and that's a problem or um, I'm not eating enough vegetables and that's why my weight's a problem. But really, um, yeah, it's great if you're cooking and yeah, it's great to eat, eat vegetables. But really the, the number one thing that causes weight problems is eating too much food. It's like the quantity piece is really key. And also, because you can be eating vegetables and you can be cooking for yourself, which a lot, which exactly was what I was doing before I learned to listen to my my tummy but I was still overeating and too much food is too much food it doesn't matter whether it's broccoli or donuts like so getting the quantity piece is really key and so learning to listen to your body is amazing because you can do it like your body's here with you all the time and it knows that best and the thing is that when you tune into like how much food your body needs you're not you're you're able to you feel satisfied so you're not like it just cuts down all that like when you're counting calories and you're, you're like de restricting and depriving yourself then that drives like overeating whereas when you tune into your body you giving your body what it needs so you're not overeating but you're also feeling satisfied so you're not making yourself go hungry and so then that means that you don't have those urges to overeat and binge 
like cra- crazy because you're giving your body what you need. So like this skill of listening to your internal satiety cues is really key. And um, one of my clients, um, Maria, she um, she like she thought that you know she is someone who doesn't cook and has never cooked and she like was really like you know this is the thing that's holding me back is not cooking but she joined like naturally healthy cop in january and the thing that really surprised her was that she actually could tune into her body and learn to like eat the right amount of food for her body. And she didn't actually have to, she hasn't started cooking. So she didn't actually have to change what she was eating. She just changed the amount and she was able to like hit her goal just by listening, learning the skill of listening to her tummy. So it really is. And if you feel like, oh, look, I, I, I can't do that. I've tried intuitive eating. I was like that too. I had tried it, but when I hadn't tried it with the like when I worked with a coach and I tried it with that belief that I could do it that made like that changed everything it made such a big difference (laughs) um so that's the first skill is and really getting that that quantity piece makes all the difference to your weight and how you feel and then the second second skill is the skill of making intentional choices. And so what that looks like, it's like rather than like being around someone who randomly grazes and eats like little bits and pieces, squirrels, foraging like a squirrel, like actually eating proper meals and yes, having snacks, but just being intentional around the snacks. And also like um, making intentional choices around treats. So yes, you do allow like ice cream, you do have sugar, you do have alcohol if you if that's what you want, but being intentional around it. So rather than it being a, um, a just a ran- like just a random thing, like and over overdoing it and overindulging, like actually being intentional where you go, okay, yeah, I am gonna have ice cream tonight and I'm going to enjoy it and I'm going to like and so having like being intentional around it means that you get to enjoy the anticipation but also that you're able to then enjoy like enjoy the right amount and not have too much because um yeah it's like the quantity is really really key um and so really like getting to this magic place it's just these two skills of listening to your tummy and making those intentional choices um, and I know that can sound like a lot and it maybe sounds like it's like, oh, I don't know if I would be able to do that. But if you join the Naturally Healthy Club, like I break it down into tiny habits and mindset changes. So we're like just doing it step by step. Um, and and so it, it like actually be, when you've got someone guiding you, it actually isn't as hard as you think. Um, Yes. So, and I did promise you a clear, actionable first uh, first step that you can take. And so the, the easiest way to take this first baby step to changing your relationship with food. So, and the cool thing is if you do this, you're actually going to get more enjoyment from eating and you're never going to feel like you're missing out. And the thing that I would really, the, the tiny habit that I would really recommend starting with is just the habit of of learning of putting your cutlery down in between bites so when you start eating you just like remind yourself yep I'm going to put my utensils or like we call it cutlery in Australia but um utensils whatever you're calling them chopsticks if you're using chopsticks um but yeah just when you start eating just remind yourself like yeah like I'm going to put my there's no rush and just when you slow down your eating that's the first step to a enjoying your food more but also being able to tune into your tummy because often when we're eating really fast it's like you probably have that experience of like you've eaten really fast you finished everything and then like a like a few minutes later 10 minutes later you're like oh that was way too much so what we want to do instead is um yeah just learn this skill of slowing down of just taking those baby steps um and and that really comes from um putting your cutlery down in between bites um and then also like what yeah and and like so and and I made that I said it may seem like it's not going to make a difference but it really does like and this is the first step it's just slowing yourself down so that you enjoy things more um and and just when you notice oh if you notice that you've got food in your mouth and your cutlery and you like you've got you've got food in your mouth and you're you're loading up the next one just remind yourself no I'm going to put my cutlery down and just take it easy um so that's our first doable doable first step so 
Is everyone clear? Does anyone have any questions before we before we move on? Marissa's joined us. Yeah, Ellen, go. Do you want to unmute? Oh, hey, Ellen, we need to unmute. I can't hear you. So I'm a veteran of this program. And um, I would say 80% of the things you talked about, I learned and I, I use, and it really did give me all that positive change. I'm, I would like to go back again because um, once in a while, I kind of fall off the uh, stop when you're full. Right, listening to but your that's body. that's the only thing. I mean, I'm not afraid of food. I don't, I used to be sad when my family was gonna take me out for my birthday for a great dinner because I didn't want to eat because, you know, wouldn't I eat too much? I, you know, all that stuff is gone. And it's great. I, I put in the chat that I went on a tour of Europe late uh, in the spring. Oh, yeah. I'm just seeing that now. Luxury food, ate three times a day. Had I lost seven pounds. Okay. Because it's the food was so good. It was, it was luxuriously slow. And everything you said about that is true. Really good Going food. down take makes it take your time. So the cutlery, you're putting your I cutlery down, I knew I was getting Ellen. another meal. I, I now do three meals a day every day. I knew that was going to happen in the evening. So it's not like it's my last chance to be happy around food. And uh, so it definitely worked for me. Definitely worked for me. So I just, I will tell you, I had to take my driver's license test five times right? before I passed. Right. Oh, right, right, right. <laughs> So I'm someone who needs a review, needs a, um, a uh, yeah, spend a little time with that coaching. But I would like to share with everyone that I'm really 80% of the way there. Amazing. Thank you, Ellen. Yay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, and it's, it's possible. Thank you, Ellen, for coming on. Yeah. And I, I seem to have to go back to things, but I do. And I think when you have enough success with it, as I'm sure you will, it, you know, it, it just builds upon itself. It does. Yeah. 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 And it's worth doing, isn't it, Ellen? Like that's such a oh, good absolutely. place to be. Yeah. And if it took six times, I would do it six times. You know, I mean, it's, um, I love my clothes. I love looking in them, how I look in them. It does boost your tremendously. And so, yeah, if I need a refresher, I'm going back for a refresher. Amazing. Right? Excellent. Yeah, I love it, Ellen. Thank you for sharing that. Excellent. Um, so Lizzie's asked, how about eating foods we um, that we eat with my hands, like crackers? Well, um, it's up to you, uh, Lizzie. Like, if it's just a cracker, like, I guess, like, you know, you can but you can still put in a pause in between when you pick up the next one so you could put you could regulate it that way um but if i'm like eating like um like ch ch lamb chops and i'm chewing on the bone i'll actually put the chops down in between bites like now just to slow myself down because otherwise i'd be like no ignoring no ignoring so you can but you can just <laughs> like there's no right or wrong way with it lizzie it's like just experimenting um but yeah like but, but just from this knowing that like you could could put the cracker down in between bites if you like or I guess not in the back in the bowl where everyone's sharing from um that'd be worth some double dipping but yeah like you like you, you could if you've got a napkin you could put it on on a napkin but yeah like you can there's no right or wrong with that but it's like it's about slowing down so yeah great question Lizzie um okay so now we're going to talk about um and thanks for sharing Ellen um, now we're going to talk about like what, what's the impact of having this change that we're talking about? Like what's the impact of having a naturally healthy relationship with food? So I want you to think about that for you and like just, you know, what would be, what's going to change for the better if you had that peace with food, if you did that work now to change your relationship with food and, you know, felt were feeling better in your body what would the impact of that be over five years like over 10 years um and like just think about how like how that's going to change the trajectory of your life um and like here's like to give you some ideas like what it's like to have an actually a relationship with food is that 
you get the best of both worlds. Like you get to enjoy the things you love. Like Ellen's like going on a tour of Europe and eating like three times a day, loving the food. Um, you get to eat like a normal person. Like there's no crazy rules. There's no like, um, yeah, like oh, I can't go out because I'm, or I'm afraid to go. People to take me out for my birthday, like Ellen said. Like, you know, you get to be enjoy food. And like when you have this skill of learning to listen to your tummy, like there's no fear around traveling because you know your tummy's going with you um, and you feel calm and relaxed around food. You can plan um, and look forward to things and you feel that like that confidence because you know like that this isn't a problem for you. Like you feel that confidence in your when you feel good in your body. Um, and the, the other thing that I would say about this, this approach, it's, it's not fast. Like you're not going to be losing, you know, 10 pounds by Tuesday kind of thing. It's really like when you do learn this skill of listening to your body, it's, it's slow and sustainable. But the great thing about it being slow and sustainable is that, and when we do the, the thing we work on, there's no habits that we, we're doing and there's nothing that we're doing that's hard that we're not w willing to keep doing. Like if you, when you learn this skill of listening to your tummy, um, yes, you may occasionally need to come refresh on it, but like, it's not like you're not, you're like, oh, that was awful. I don't want to do that anymore now that I've hit my goal. Like, it's like, you're going to want to keep doing it. Um, so you're not going to have that fear of gaining the weight back. So, so like, I just want you to see that the, this, like, it, this is possible and that, that like, it's actually like it, it's so worth doing doing the work um and so marissa has actually joined us so she is someone who is in my um current group of the naturally healthy club so i invited her to come on and just share um her before and like where so where she was before she joined the naturally healthy club so where you are now and then what what where she is now like where she's got to with her relationship with food and her body so I'll hand over to you, Marissa. Okay. Hi, everybody. Um, so yeah, when I signed up, I remember there were a couple things Jules said, I'll teach you how to sort of be able to have chips in your life. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that was a funny one for me because I either was, you know, all or nothing, like either chips were in my diet and I was kind of eating a little too much. I have a very healthy diet with, and at that time, too many chips. I didn't know how to not have an extreme, either giving up gluten and dairy and whatever, um, or eating them and being overweight. Uh, so when I started, I thought, I, I tell Jules this, I thought I needed to lose five to 10 pounds because I wouldn't weigh myself because I was terrified of the scale. Um, and I just thought I had a little weight, weight to lose. My clothes weren't fitting anymore. I thought maybe it was middle age. But I, I took a leap of faith because I love Jules. I had taken her joyful cooking class and it had changed my life. Um, and I, I got on the scale and I was like, whoa, I think I have like 25 pounds to lose. But and it was such a supportive environment. I wasn't ashamed of that all of a sudden. I could talk about it and I had all this support. But um, and so anyway, so I I did not know how to lose weight without restricting. And then, you know, when you restrict, you always bounce back. So I didn't know how to lose weight. And I know a lot about nutrition and exercise, but I didn't know how to do it. So um, I also was having stomach problems at night. I was waking up in the middle of the night with ouchy stomach. And what I've learned is that I was overeating. I, didn't, I wouldn't have known it. I'm, you know, so, and also I'm six feet tall. I couldn't even tell where the weight was. So this has just been a real, such an amazing experience of learning how to I can eat any food. I just listen to my stomach. I don't have to restrict anything as long as I stop eating when I'm satisfied. I've lost at this point 27 pounds and over six months. And um, it was pretty easy. <laughs> and like Jules said, there's nothing I want to stop. I love that I never feel over full. I never wake up in the night with stomach pain ever. Oh. Um, yeah, I was thinking about that this morning, which is just so incredible. There's no, yeah, and there's nothing to like boomerang back to. Like I'm, I'm not going to go back to old habits. And um, I ha also, had to, I had, I remember when I started, I would have this like three o'clock thing where I would sort of put my iPad on and take a break from work and just, I wanted something crunchy. 
And then also after dinner, I'd want a snack. And those were two things that disappeared pretty quickly, which is amazing to me. Like we through mindset work with Jules and the support of the group, I can't believe that those those habits that seemed so hard and so ingrained. I tried stopping after dinner, eating after dinner before, and never had a whole lot of success. I always felt um, restricted. So, I mean, that's where I am. I know how to eat. I love my relationship with food. I'm not constantly thinking about it. Because I think when you're trying, Ellen, right? When you're trying to lose weight, yeah, you don't win either way. You're not really losing weight and you're thinking about it all food, about food all the time. So this is like amazing to me. And I'm, you get a, a treat a day with this program and for the rest of my life. And I love planning my treats. Jules talks about dopamine and we change when we feel good. And I love to plan my treat. My treat might be a piece of dark chocolate or it might be a croissant depending on what I need and where I am with my body. And it's like, it's just the coolest program. It absolutely has rewired my brain and my relationship with food. And I'm not ashamed anymore. I can get on the scale. I can talk about weight. It was so secret. And so just like, something in my head that I had to deal with. And it was kind of shameful. I felt ashamed that I, when I gained weight, I would feel ashamed. I don't feel any of that about weight now, right? We talked about gorgeous and inspiring at any size. Like, I don't care what size you are. I don't want you to feel ashamed, right? Yeah, and, and we started say, from yeah. that place of acceptance. Hey, Marissa, like, yeah, like loving ourselves where we are. Like, yeah. Than, yeah. I couldn't start being like, I feel like I'm 25 pounds overweight and I'm ugly. Like that was not going to work. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I had to be like, this is beautiful. And this is a different me. And I'd like to lose weight because for you now, I think I'll feel better. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and, um, and what about your trip, Marissa? Yeah. I just went to Europe too. And this is just amazing to me. I went to Italy and I went to Amsterdam and I, in Italy, I had gelato every day. Mm -hmm. But I would stop when I was, it was my treat. And I would stop when I was satisfied. Like I didn't eat the entire thing. Usually, I think one day I did on a cone. <laughs> mm -hmm. And we had pizza and we had pasta, but I stopped when I was satisfied. So I was conscious, but I was so present. And uh, what I mean, I remember Dutch pancakes in Amsterdam. Again, though, I was, I was conscious of listening to my tummy. And I was conscious of trying not to have more than one treat a day. Sometimes I would because I was drinking a little more alcohol. Anyway, I got back and I'm on the plane and I'm thinking, well, maybe I just won't weigh myself for like two days and I'll just eat perfectly for two days. And then I thought, no, that's not the naturally healthy way. Curiosity. Let's just be curious. Let's be curious about this. What happens on the scale when I just had this trip? I had lost a pound. I was kind of shocked. The totally present, totally engaged, eating what I wanted, but listening to my tummy. And I, I had actually lost a pound and I was ready to be like, okay, if I gained like 10 pounds, it's okay. I know how to get, the, I control the scale. I know how to get it back, but that's not what happened at all. So that was amazing to me. Yeah. And I'm so happy. I was so present on my trip. I've had so many vacations where I was kind of at war with myself, you know, the whole trip. Yeah. You know, should I indulge? Oh, I indulge. Now I need to exercise more stuff like, you know, junk like that. Yeah. Amazing. So Marissa, like thinking back to before you joined the Naturally Healthy Club, like what was your, like, did, what was your hesitation before you joined? Uh, I, I, yeah, we've talked about this. I didn't think it would work. Yeah. I thought that, um, I thought that like losing weight is so hard and it just wouldn't work that I'm almost 49 and this weight, that weight was there to stay. And maybe you could help other people, but maybe you couldn't help me. Or it was going to be restriction again and I was going to bounce back. So, but I really I had big fears that it just wouldn't work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because I'm, I think um, before Naturally Healthy Club, I tried a few things where like either a couple things would happen. I, I'd give up foods and then I would lose weight, but then I'd gain it all back and then some. Or I would try like, doing things that, and I don't know, I never weighed myself. So actually, I don't even know. A big thing that was so different was you saying, don't judge it by your clothes, get on the scale. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I was fearful that it wouldn't work. Um, and I was also, you know, like I said, there was some shame around it. It was, I remember like filling out that application and telling you, I was also worried that I would get obsessed. 
because I have that tendency with restriction, I can get, I, in the past, I could get really obsessed. So I was worried I would get into that mode and maybe it wouldn't be healthy for me. That was a hesitation too. So shame, it wouldn't work and that I would get obsessed. Um, and it did work. It's, it's the opposite of getting obsessed. It is so nurturing and healing. Yeah, amazing. And what, what made you decide to take, like to d- sign up even though you had those hesitations? Uh, so I think I was sort of thinking about it. And then you had this Instagram post and you were going through your closet, your beautiful closet. And you said, see this closet, everything fits. And I was like, oh my gosh, nothing fits in my closet right now. I want that. And, and I trusted you because we've had this relationship with Joyful Cooking, which everyone, it just changed my life. <laughs> <laughs> we had some complicated cooking issues in my family. So um, it was it was that. I was like, I want that. I want my clothes to fit in my closet again. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so just, I think we've also talked about this. It's sometimes it doesn't feel okay to want to lose weight right now in, in our culture. So you were saying, hey, if you want to lose weight, that's an okay thing and I'm going to help you do it. So those, those all kind of, I was just, I think I probably, I must've probably tried on some clothes recently and been like, oh. <laughs> that was a good sort of, you know, things coming together. Yeah. But I, I, I can't recommend it enough. If you want to lose weight and you want a gentle, it's gentle, slow paced, you can do it. You can do it. And you won't, you won't feel sad and you won't feel deprived and you won't feel starving or anything like that. <laughs> Amazing. Oh, thank you so much for sharing, Marissa. I really appreciate you taking the time to come on and and share. Of course. And if anyone has any questions for me, feel free to reach out or in the chat or whatever. (laughs) Yeah, amazing. Um, Okay, so MF has shared a question. That was awesome, Marissa. Thank you. Um, Let's go back to me. Um, Um, okay, Emma says my mom, who has used control over food for her whole life, says she listens to her body, but it feels like we should all have the same limits and nobody can cook with garlic. XYZ, so many rules, so she feels good. So is it possible to cook and eat in a group that doesn't want the same food? Interesting, Emma. Um, yeah, I guess. Yeah, of course it's of course it's possible. I'm, not, I'm just I'm good, kind of curious, like if your mom um, is like if you're still living with your mom, and and yeah, can you maybe like post that question again? And if because yeah, it's always possible. Like I like in my family, my boys eat quite differently to what I do. Like they love carbs, and I have diabetes, so I eat, tend to eat very um low carbs and, and they, they they feel like they're allergic to vegetables um but like last night for dinner we ate like we had chicken roast chicken and like I p- cooked potatoes for them and then my husband and I had salad together like so we had the salad chicken and salad they had the chicken and potatoes and they had a little tiny bit of salad um so yeah there's always ways to work work around cooking in a group okay so for everyone like I want you to think now about like readiness your readiness like on a scale of one to ten like how ready are you to change your relationship with your food with food and your body like right now so just first number that comes into your head and you can type it in the chat if you like yeah okay Melissa's saying five um yeah okay anyone else got a number of on how ready you are to change your relationship with food in your body now well lizzie's nine right okay yep sarah's saying five amazing so whatever your number is and just like yeah whenever you do think just like the first number that pops into your head so i want you to think now like if you, if you're so, so melissa and sorry like you've given yourself a five and sherry's seven like why isn't why isn't that that number lower? So why are you why are you at that five? Like what are what are all the reasons why you're at that five and that you are ready now? I want you just to to think about that. Lizzie's already at a nine, so yeah. But, but yeah, when you when you're looking at readiness, like yeah, like why is why isn't that number lower? Um, okay, so we, it's everything. 
Uh, okay, she's the MS has posted. Um, okay, Cause, yeah. Yeah, I think MF, like with this, like everyone's, like everyone's different. You're right. Everyone has different food texture, digestion issues. So it's like, and it seems like when we do the work in Natural Health Club, it's really learning to tune into you and what works best for you um, and like what works best for your body. And so like, I don't give you a list of foods that you should be eating or not eating. Like, I don't tell you any of that. It's up to you to make the choices around what food you want to eat but I help you learn this skill of tuning into your body so that and also like for some people like you know you when you do have digestive issues like tuning into your body helps you know oh yeah actually I, like and some people find that like you know they they realize that if they have too much dairy like that doesn't sit well with them or whatever it is but like tuning into your body is the best like because our bodies I don't know what's best for your body but your body knows but what I can do is help you tune into your body um yeah right sarah said i have so much tension around food that i'm not sure i can trust um if my tum has truly had enough or not can you advise how to manage that yeah sarah it's like it's like taking baby steps and also knowing that like that that you can like eat the like it's a skill that you're learning so it's like when you're riding a bike you don't just like get on the bike and ride like you you you, you like you get on the bike you're a bit wobbly so there'll be times where you when you start listening to your body like tuning into your tummy like I don't, what I mean is like physically like when you're eating physically tuning in and seeing how you how, how does my tummy feel when you get into that when you start doing that there's going to be times where you stop too soon and then you're hungry like you know an hour later or there'll be times where you eat a little bit past and you go, oh, no, that was too late. And what you do is you just experiment and you don't make it mean anything wrong, like that you can't, like when you when you don't get, nail it the first time, right? You're just going to learn. So it's just a matter of practicing and learning. And if you, like, it's no big deal. Like if you stop too soon, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Marissa's saying remembering my tummy discovery of where the tummy actually is. <laughs> yeah, that like yeah, so your tummy's actually up higher in your body than than lower down. Um, but yeah, like it's Sarah, like it's like, of course you're not going to get it perfect. And when you approach it from that mindset of just experimenting, then you actually like it's amazing that you can get there. Um yes, so like now we'll like just like, does anyone have any questions before we before we move on? Any other questions? Is everything making sense so far? Um, yeah. So, like, I guess like a few hesitations that come up with like Marissa's shared her hesitation around like believing that it would work for her. Um, but another big one that comes up for people is just this like, oh, time and energy of. Like it's going to take a lot of time and energy to change my relationship with food. And so I wanted to share the story of Cindy, who was someone that worked with me a couple of years ago. And when she decided to join the Naturally Healthy Club, she had like her life was like it um, went, went a bit crazy. So she um, was navigating a divorce. She'd been married for like 30 odd years. So that was huge. She was still working full time. Um, and then her daughter had triplets. So she was, and her daughter lived close by. So she was helping out with the triplets. And so she had a lot going on in her life. And, but she would just like, she joined, she just would listen to the, um, the weekly calls. There's a, a pod, private podcast feed. So she would listen to those in her car when she was driving to work. And she just applied the, those like the print the the steps that I was I was teaching um and she was able to get amazing results and I just wanted to read what she, what she shared with me so this was she wrote this a, a few months ago so she said good morning Jules just wanted to let you know that today I hit my goal weight I now automatically eat healthy and don't really even want a lot of sweets I still enjoy whatever I like but pay attention to how my body feels and try and stop when I've had enough I have a big bowl of Halloween candy sitting here so yeah she sent it to me back in October um, and it doesn't really interest me coming from someone who used to sneak their kids to candy she said I really just really am a different person I have no worries I'm going to gain the weight back um, weight is something I've struggled with all my life. And she said, I'd lost 70 pounds, five pounds since I started your program. 
um, no dieting, no restricting, no counting, just change my thoughts and change my life. So this is a mindset shift that I've carried into the rest of the places of my life. And my life looks nothing like it did when I started in January, 2020. Thank you for doing what you're doing. So yeah, just Cindy, her life was crazy and she was still able to just slowly apply this. So the work that we do, it's really like the way that I have it set up is we have one weekly call a month, a week, one weekly call a month, one weekly call a week, which is like an hour a week, um, a, a, which is live, but you can listen to the replay. And then I, there's an exercise I get everyone to do that it's literally five minutes a day. And that is enough to change your relationship with food dramatically. Um, so, um, yeah, no matter what you've got going on in your life now, and it, it kind of like the, the work that we're doing, like listening to you tell me, like you're eating anyway. So it's not like that takes ex any extra time. It's like tuning into to your body. Um, so you can fit, it, it meshes in with your life. It's like, it's not like it has to be this separate project that you're going to like devoting hours and hours to like it's really like a little thing you could do on your, the side would you say did you have anything to add to that about the time commitment marissa yeah i um because i'm i am a kind of person who's like i don't even care if it takes a lot of time <laughs> but it didn't it did I, yeah i was thinking of yeah as you said that i'm like yeah that's interesting because i wouldn't have cared if it had been a huge time commitment but it wasn't at all it's such an integral part of your day and everything you're doing anyway and i think everybody really enjoys that one hour call a week yeah so, it's actually yeah. kind of it's not like it's like we're studying and learning it's like we actually we, we're interacting and having a nice like a bit of a chat bit of a laugh <laughs> yeah like, exactly and, and it's so supportive so yeah no, no no it's not a it's not a big time commitment and it's such baby steps which is just the coolest thing that you you absolutely succeed tiny tiny steps yeah <laughs> amazing thanks Marissa <laughs> um and then the other thing I think I guess is like people like having not working with a coach before can be a, like if you haven't worked with a coach before so um yeah, what would you say about that, Marissa? You, you have you 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 are, you are a coach, so you you've done coaching before. Yeah, but I would say, um, you know, I, I I I tell everyone this too. You said immediately you fit in. Ah, uh, yeah, you fit in, and that was a big Belong, one for me. Yeah. Um, someone just uh, MF just asked how much do members interact with each other, and that's it's kind of as much or as little as you want. I interact all the time on the Circle app. I love it. <laughs> And you feel so safe to be vulnerable if something's not working. And there's jewels you have in the workbook. Um, if you're struggling, you have to tell me because I won't know. <laughs> so I think working with a coach is so cool. It's so much better than trying to do it on your own. It's so much more fun. And you don't know what's going to come up for you, right? You don't know what your obstacles are going to be or what's going to be hard. Or, and so to have a coach there who can help you is, is really, really cool versus we've all tried before and things come up and we don't really know what to do. And maybe we quit or maybe we don't, but to have somebody there to help you and support you is so cool. Never and never judges ever, ever, ever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cause when you, yeah. Cause like we all have our unique mindset things or little things that come up. Hey, so having a coach is like giving you customized support. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks Marissa. Um, yeah. And actually MF, so, the way um the way it works so we have the zoom calls but then we also have a um marissa mentioned the circle group so it's like a private facebook group but it's on a standalone platform so you don't need to be on facebook to um and it's got like an app on your phone for your phone so you can just like jump in the group and share if you've had a win or if you you're struggling you can jump in and get support and so really some people like use that a lot some people of course don't and just like like cindy like just do it all in on their in their own time as well so it's really there's both options to suit your personality and your style um and I guess the the other the other thing that um often comes up for people is um just this thought of like you know I've tried before and I, or or like joining programs and then not showing up um I think that was something that one of my clients Amy um shared that that was her hesitation because she has that history of like joining things and maybe starting but they're dropping off and um and so I actually, I'll link 
when I put the replay up, I'll link to, there's a podcast episode that I did with Amy where she shared how, but I think also like being part of like having a coach helps you avoid that because it gives you that little bit of accountability so that if you are feeling yourself drifting, then you can like reach out for help. So, um, so I think people find like, as opposed to just being in a, in a program. Okay. And the, and I guess the other hesitation people have is around investing in themselves because, you know, we spending money on ourselves can be like tricky, but, um, but really like I want it, like when you change your health, like your health is everything. If you don't have your health and also your confidence is everything. And there was, um, Kim, who I worked with in this, this group, she, um, she actually found that like what by like changing her relationship with food, losing a little bit of weight, her confidence grew and she realized that like her, she wasn't really happy in her job. And so she went after her dream job and she used to have this big commute and now it's like 15 minutes away. She's really happy with her job and that wouldn't have happened. And she's got to pay rides. Like that wouldn't have happened if she hadn't have invested in herself and done that work to change her relationship with food and her and like how she's feeling in her body. So that's it. So if um, in terms of like what's next, if any of this has resonated with you, um, I really invite you to come and join the Naturally Healthy Club. So the, um, the group, next group starting in September 2023 and applications open on the 31st of July. So and they're open from 31st of July to the 4th of August. The last group sold out. So make sure you um, make sure you get on the the way or well, actually if you, you i'll be sending you um an email when applications open so keep an eye out for that and if you want to find out more about the naturally healthy club the the invitation page i've just put the link in the chat there um and i'll guide you like I'll, like it really is fun and it really is possible for you um so yeah i would love i would love to be a coach um and yeah, really all you need to do is just to decide that you're willing to take that first step and I'll support you and to take care of the rest. And yeah, between now and then when applications open, I really encourage you to start focusing on that thought. Like it's possible for me to change my relationship with food and also to build that tiny habit of just experimenting with putting your cutlery down between bites and slowing down. So um, yeah, so that's it. That's it for today. And if you have any questions, um, I'm happy to to hang around if anyone has any questions or any thoughts. But apart from that, we won't wrap up there. Okay. Thanks so much, Marissa and Ellen. Good to see you both.